Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back. My name is Steve and this is Maple and Honey. All right, well, I don't have any food today. I don't have any hot dogs or hamburgers or steak or anything like that. But I do have three bottles of whiskey that I would like to share with you. My top three um, allocated but attainable bottles that, that you could collect or you could have in your, in your cabinet, in your collection. Uh, for a lot of the folks who are sort of starting your journey as a bourbon drinker, starting your journey as a bourbon taster and, and someone who enjoys bourbon. So let's get right to it. Um, I have my three bottles right here, but before I do, I consider three bullet points, three um, main criteria that I, I thought these three bourbons would have to hit in order to, to be considered the top three. Number one, I think obviously the, the allocated portion of it, right? I mean, obviously these are allocated, so it would have to be sort of rare, somewhat rare, sort of somewhat harder to get, but at the same time, not impossible to get. So I'm not talking about some of the bourbons that are, you know, completely unattainable, like the Pappies or the Willet Purple Tops or whatever. Those are almost impossible to get, right? So I'm not talking about those, but I'm talking about some of the ones that are uh, not commonly seen, commonly seen in, you know, grocery stores or, or some of the liquor stores, but uh, if you look hard enough, you could find them. So some of those ones that are well liked, well recommended, well, you know, respected as well. So that's first criteria. Number two would be the price. Um, you know, I'm not picking these three bottles that are, you know, thousand dollars or whatnot. I thought for a lot of the folks who are starting to collect these bourbons, who are starting to enjoy these bourbons and, and sort of gather these bourbons, I thought, you know, under hundred dollars, will be the most reasonable uh, spot to sort of put a, put a stake on. And the lastly, the third criteria, will, criteria it's an obvious one, but it's a must, uh, that it has to taste good. It has to, I, I would have to enjoy it. Uh, yours could be different, but in my opinion, these are something that I enjoy drinking, that I enjoy tasting. So those three are my criteria. So without further ado, let's get right to it. My first bottle is sort of an obvious one, but but cannot exclude it. This is the Colonel E.H. Taylor small batch uh, bottled and bond uh, bourbon. For the folks who are, you know, well aware of bourbons or you don't, you sort of are getting into the scene of bourbon, you probably heard about the Colonel E.H. Taylor, right? They're, um, they're very popular. Let me open this guy up. They're very popular. They come in a little fancy you know, tube, tubular thing here. And, um, and they are delicious and they're well um, sought after. So um, again, this is the bottled and bond version. So it's 50% uh, alcohol, uh, 100, 100, 100 proof, right? And um, yeah, these are very highly allocated. They're distilled by the Buffalo Trace Distillery and they make a lot of these. They pump these guys out, especially the small batch. Uh, but just the demand is just soaring. People want these so badly. So even if you see them at, let's say, you know, I don't know, uh, your local, you know, wine and spirit store, you know, it's gone in within an hour. But and there's a good reason for that. It's because whether you're a bourbon, you know, lover for a long time, you're very experienced at this, or you're just starting out, you know, everyone, you know, loves this bourbon you know, throughout the entire spectrum because it's, it's obviously it's very good. Uh, people love it. it. Has a very good packaging, and uh, it's just word got around that it's a great, great bourbon for great price. So, so the, talking about the price, the retail is about forty. I think it's forty-four dollars, forty-five dollars. The last bottle I got was for around that much. But I think a lot of people are having trouble getting at that price. Um, I, I've seen it go close to hundred dollars at liquor stores or smaller stores, and that's pretty common. But for the most part, it's uh, you know between forty and sixty dollars. So it's very attainable. It won't break your bank uh, when you get it. Uh, the question is, if you see it, you know, can you get it fast enough uh, before others? So that's the main problem. So, so that's the price. And taste-wise, yeah, I reviewed this already in one of my previous videos. It's 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 dessert in a bottle. It has a very distinct cotton candy uh, scent as well as the taste. I remember when I first tried it, I was like, this is cotton candy. This, this smells like cotton candy in a bottle, uh, in, a, in a liquid form. It has like a classic, like a maple syrup, like a brown, like a little bit of burnt brown sugar notes in there. You know, it has the oaky base at the bottom and it has a, you know, sort of a medium to light to medium finish. Again, it tastes delicious. 
I love it and I love this bottle. Whenever I treat the guests over and they want to try something something good, it's one of the bottles that I bring out to, to sort of share with the friends and, and close family as well. So, so let's move on to the second bottle. The second bottle that I like to recommend is, it's relatively controversial, but, um, but I think it's worth it. It's the Green Weller. It's the Weller Special Reserve, the baby Weller they call it, right? It's the cheapest Weller. So for those who don't know, Weller, again, it's made by the Buffalo Trace Distillery, same as this guy right here. And they have the, the Special Reserve, the lowest one, the cheapest one here. They got the black, the red, um, and they also have the blue one that's more sought after and more expensive. But this one is also in the same family and people love this one because it's made out of wheat. Uh, has a different profile than some of the other bourbons that are out there. So, you know, this one has a little bit of rye in there, I'm sure. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the bourbons have a little bit of rye in there, uh, but this one has wheat. And the wheat makes it a little bit, it sort of rounds out the flavors, rounds out the characteristics, and it sort of, you know, mitigates the, the, the spikiness of the alcohol, if that makes sense. It's more sweeter, more silkier compared to other whiskeys with rye or higher proof. So, some people that really love this one. I mean, I like it too. It's very easy on the palate. It's very easy to drink. Uh, it's only 45% alcohol, 90 proof. So you don't need any ice, you know, you can sort of sip it and it's not too strong on your palate at all. And so the downside is that the finish is very light. The finish is very abrupt. So once it gets your tongue, after a second or two, gone. Um, so you sort of have to keep drinking if you want to keep experiencing that, that sweet wheat and bourbon taste. So, but it's good. It's good. Again, this one is very highly allocated because it's a Weller. It has the Weller name in the front. It, it sort of writes the coattails of all these big brothers who are more well-known and well-liked. Funny thing is, this one, I remember, I've, I, I vividly remember, you know, years back, maybe three or four or five years ago, it could be um, around there. I remember seeing this on the shelves of like, of like grocery stores or like Total Wine and more or Bethmo. I've seen it just lined up and people wouldn't buy them. Um, but since then, I don't know, maybe five years ago and now until now, you can't find these. People just can't have enough of these. I don't know if they like the price or it's just too much of a hype because it's a, it's a Weller and it's a weed at bourbon. It's sort of similar to Pappy. So people are sort of, so just snatching everything. I don't know, but for whatever reason, can't find these everywhere. Now they become allocated and, and, and very rare. So, but at the same time, um, you know, if you look for it hard enough, I think it's attainable. Uh, you could find it at some certain stores. They still get it multiple times throughout the year, unlike the other more sought after wellers. So, so yeah, I think it's, a, it's allocated, but still attainable. Um, price again is on $20, $25, up to $30 is the retail price. But I've seen it go over you know, 50, 60, 70, $80, uh, which is crazy. But even at that price, it's still under $100. So I think it still checks the box there. And uh, as, again, I think it tastes really good. It lives very l short. The, 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 the lifetime it has in your palate per sip is very brief in, in, your, in your mouth. So that's the, that's the major downside of this one. But it's very easy to drink. So if you like sweeter sipping, easier sipping, um, not too spiky, uh, not too strong bourbon, this, one's, this one might be right up your alley. And it's a crowd pleaser too. A lot of people want to try it. Okay, the last one I have is, I'll say, yeah, sure, I'll say. It's my favorite out of the three. But it's the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. I think it's by Heaven Hill Distillery. Uh, so it's not the same distillery that these two guys are from. This one's a little uh, doozy. So this one is 60.5 um, proof, so it's up there on the proof. So when you taste it in the mouth, in fact, I'm gonna pour it a little bit right now. So when you pour it, the profile is completely different from these two. These two are just mainly sweet, maple syrupy, sugary, and a little bit of oak at the end. And that's about it, I think. That's pretty much sums it up for these two guys. And they're from the same distillery. So, you know, although this one's Vita, they sort of have the similar profile, in my opinion, the sort of similar level. Um, 
But this one is completely different. This one is 60% alcohol, so it has a punch, a huge punch, uh, it's heck of a punch. It has all kinds of flavors. It has a nutty flavor, has like a, like a toasted, a bready flavors in the, in the mouth. Um, it has like uh, the, the spice that comes out towards the back, um, the heavy oak presence all throughout the palate. And the best part of it is, it's the, the, the mouth feel that it, it, it provides. These two are not even in the same league. It'll just coat your mouth and your palate and all inside of your mouth and just give you a big old hug as it goes down. So this one, um, I mean, in my opinion, out of the three is my favorite. I love these two too, but um, you know, this one just covers all the bases for me. Has a really good finish, has multiple flavors, more than these two. And um, you know, it's, uh, it's, I would say it's more available than these two guys. The lowest I've seen, Actually, I've seen this at Costco uh, selling for like 56 bucks, which is crazy, um, which is an awesome deal. So yeah, I mean, this one again is allocated, but still very attainable. Price well under 100 bucks and it's delicious. It has that nutty, um, that toasted nut flavor, toasted bready flavor, it has the spices a little bit and man, it's, it's, it's great. It's great. So I'm going to try a little bit and see how it tastes. If I detect any other notes. Cheers. Ooh. Yeah, it's fighting with me. It's fighting with me inside. But it's good. A little bit citrusy too. A slightly citrusy, like a burnt orange. Like, um, like if you go to a bar and they're making old fashioned or something and the bartender sort of burning that orange peel. Sort of has that taste. Um, like a thick uh, maple syrup um, taste as well. Like a toasted nuts. Mm, it's delicious. And again, the finish is amazing. It's as good as it gets. Still going, it's going down, sliding down the back of my throat, sliding down. It's covering all the little cilias and inside my throat and giving me, you know, it's just perking up all the nerves inside of it. It's giving me the warm hug as it goes down. It's still going, it's amazing, it's delicious. And the nutty flavor, it's, it's still here. It feels like, you know, you just ate a toasted you know, just a clump of toasted almonds or something. You don't get that on these two guys. These are more sweet, uh, very tender and gentle um, in, in the palate. So this one is more like a, like a heavyweight fighter compared to these two. So, so yeah, that's all I have for you today. Um, again, these are my top three allocated but attainable bourbons that you could have as you start your journey um, of collecting or enjoying your, your bourbon. Again, I'm sure a lot of you might disagree with me. You know, comment below. Uh, let me know what your top three are. I'm happy to, happy to read those and, and, and respond back to you as well. So thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Have a good one. If you get a chance, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. It'll help me a lot. And I'll uh, catch you on the next one. See ya.